cavitation is the creation of gaps or cavities in liquids. Now, under high pressure, liquids like water don't really change that much in terms of the volume that they actually occupy. However, when the pressure is decreased, the liquid can undergo a substantial change. And when the pressure falls below the vapour pressure at the liquid, this point, the liquid turns into a gas that basically boils at room temperature. So you get a bubble of gas created in the liquid. Of course, when the pressure is returned to normal, the pressure in the gas bubble increases, it's converted back into a liquid, and the bubble collapses. This collapse is rapid. The collapsing bubble sides meet, they bump into each other, and produce a shock wave. This shock wave can be extremely powerful and can cause damage to apparently very solid materials like steel. The collapsing bubble is actually in contact with the surface. This cavitation damage often happens to devices like boat propellers and occurs the motion of the propeller through the water causes a change in pressure. Ahead of the motion of the propeller causes an increase in pressure. Behind the motion is a decrease in pressure. Of course, the faster blades of the propeller are moving, the greater the change in pressure, the more likely cavitation is to occur. Now, the shock waves created by cavitation are repeated often enough. They can cause fractures to appear in the blade, and eventually those fractures can cause the blade to dramatically fail, part of the blade falling off whilst it's in motion, and causing some serious problems. The cavitation effect, of course, also generates noise and vibration, which they come from the propeller of a submarine can make the submarine easier to detect. The design of submarine propellers needs to take steps to minimise any cavitation effect. And while cavitation can be a major problem in boats, it also needs to be taken into account the design of the propeller may limit the speed at which it rotates. Liquids are also moved in pipes underground using propellers or impellers, depending on whether it's pushing or pulling the liquid. These devices create cavitation that can damage either the pumping mechanism or the pipe itself. Being underground, this damage would be extremely difficult to fix or even detect with this actual damage occurring. So again, it needs to be considered very carefully in the design of any underground pumping mechanism. However, propellers are not the only way cavitation can occur in water. Hydrofoils also rely on difference in pressure to provide lift. Difference in this pressure causes then cavitation to occur, the lift generated by the hydrofoil ceases and the boat being supported by the hydrofoil can fall back into the water. One of the overlooked consequences of cavitation is the sound created by the bubbles collapsing. The frequency of this sound is often ultrasonic frequency which can directly interfere with ocean animals who use ultrasound to navigate and hunt in their daily lives. And this additional noise can make it difficult for marine animals to thrive. In addition, animals like dolphins can actually be restricted in their maximum swimming speed. And so, as they go faster, cavitation can start to occur on the flukes at the back of a dolphin's tail as they push through the water. As the bubbles created by cavitation collapse, it is painful to the dolphin. The dolphins generally avoid creating the conditions where cavitation can actually occur on their flukes. And not all cavitation is harmful. There are times when the effect can be used for a positive effect. Cavitation can be useful in cleaning or in actually mixing substances. The most promising uses of cavitation could be in the field of medicine. It's also where cavitation may produce some major issue. A cavitation can normally happen in the human body as the heart and the blood is being rushed through the heart valves. This effect can be dramatically increased with the use of artificial hearts. Now some of the artificial heart valves had valves which created a lot of cavitation. As a result, ruptured many of the red blood cells passing through the valve. New, more flexible valves and generally improved design have reduced this problem, but occasionally can still cause issues with artificial uh, valves in hearts. The damaging effects of cavitation though can be used in a positive way by something called high intensity focused ultrasound. Most people will be fairly familiar with ultrasound scanners that bounce sound waves off tissues in the human body. A receiver can then detect reflected sound waves and build a picture what the sound passed through. Ultrasound can also be used as a focus to create cavitation on items close to the surface of the body, for instance, in cataracts in the eyes. Care has to be taken though for the creation of the cavitation in a specific area as not to damage the surrounding healthy tissue. Alternatively, by using a special reflector, the target ultrasound wave can be focused into a very localised area, 
to target locations deep within the body, like a kidney or gallstones. When these items are being broken up into smaller pieces, remnants can then be flushed from the body in normal action of the organs. A different form of capitation and ultrasound can be used in a targeted treatment of cancer. One of the major issues with standard drug treatment of cancer is to target the cancer cells specifically and leave the healthy cells intact. Here, a process called sonoporation. The patient is injected with microbubbles containing the medication, then circulate around the body. When they reach the site of the cancer, they're then popped using ultrasound, releasing the chemicals to then attack the local cancerous cells, leaving the other cells mostly unharmed. Only does the ultrasound release the chemicals from within the microbubbles. It also loosens the bonds on the cell walls, allowing the large chemical molecules contained in the microbubbles to penetrate the cancer cells. The bubbles and cavitation water have a range of interesting applications in the world around us.